See it played, death ride, haul fire pass. The 4th Indian Division assault on Hafaya Pass during Operation Battle Axe, June 15 and 16, 1941. Starting uh, right away with the detailed sequence of play, we have air allocation phase once daily. So this is a two-day battle. Um, the first daylight turn of each day by both sides. So first question, of course, is do we do this air allocation phase on the very first turn of the battle, of the scenario? Um, looking at the turn track, uh, the very first turn, and also, well, actually, back up. Looking at the scenario card, it does show a start time of 0400 on 15 June. Um, yeah. And that corresponds also to the turn record track, which the turn record track suggests that it is, in fact, um, the first daylight turn of this day. So, therefore, I'm going to go ahead and assume that both sides are, are doing the air allocation phase. So, both players determine how many air units are available for the current day. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think I remember this from before. And I'm going to have the, the Death Ride Hofia Pass rule supersede the sequence of play. Because the sequence of play is possibly general. So... When I go to the fire support rules of the actual Hellfire Pass rules, um, we talk. Uh, it talks about allocation at the start of each turn. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna, so, so the, skip the first daily turn. That I believe is the way it's done in the broader series. But here we're just going to do a roll at the start of each turn. Uh, so these are two-hour turns in Hellfire Pass. Two-hour daylight turns. And the British player will get a mission on a roll of one or two, and the German player will get a mission on a roll of one to three. So the British Army uh, rolled a ten, so they get no uh, no no air uh, no close air support mission this turn. But the Germans rolled a three, so they do get a um, a mission there. All right, so we will. Set that aside. Um, use. A player may call for their air mission, one counter only per player, normally in support of assaults or air ground attack. They are lost if not used for a specific support mission. Okay, so yeah, so we'll just remember to use that. Try to remember. Okay, I don't think there's going to be much to do here, but the, the next uh, phase is the combat service support phase. Uh, once daily, first daylight turn of each day by both sides, reinforcements and withdrawals. Um, I don't think the Germans get any um, reinforcements in this battle. Uh, the, the British Army does. Um, but that's but that's later, not this turn. Um, then we have then we have replacements, which I don't think is going to apply at the start. Well, I'm just going to assume that. Uh, reorganization, I assume that doesn't apply start now it's a, it, it does have intelligence so both players determine the level of patrol modifiers that are used for the day I did not realize that this game used patrol uh, patrols I know that you know the larger series does but let me double check this yeah that's a pretty cool idea in the broader series but I don't think that that's used in this in this game so I'm just going to skip that as I'll certainly skip it for now uh, and, then, and then supply determination. The German and Army, uh, British Army players determine supply status of all units. Uh, we're good. Um, but just to note uh, for now, um, we do have, where is, there it is. Right here we have our supply unit, um, a supply company for the 104th Panzer Grenadier. I put it there uh, next to the regimental headquarters. Um, with uh, with uh, an infantry uh, platoon for security. Okay, it's just uh, two things is to say about supply at this point, or three things really. One, it's given as an optional rule, but I will definitely be playing with it. Um, uh, two, uh, um, there. Uh, two, I don't think supplies will be a factor right now. I think every, I think the German force is good. And three, there is 
a um, supply control relationships. Again, it's op it says optional there because the supply rules themselves are optional. Um, and it shows the, the hierarchy for supply. But uh, so it, it's 1st Battalion, 104th uh, Panzer Grenadier Combat Units to um, the battalion headquarters there, 104th Panzer Grenadier Battalion Headquarters to the regimental headquarters and then these um, separate units, uh, anti-air and anti-tank trace to the regimental headquarters. But on this side, there are no ranges, which assumes, which leads me to assume that there are no ranges enforced for the Germans in this battle. You'll see on the British Army side of the uh, play aid, it gives your your ranges for each uh, span. So this, uh, oops, need my tools. Um, looking back the other way, this is the British side, British Army side. I'm looking back towards the German defenders at Halfaya Pass. Um, basically, there was nothing for the, I, I wasn't gonna have the Germans do anything. I already set them up how I wanted them. Uh, I quickly decided I wasn't gonna make any, was not gonna make any changes. So um, just skip the phases for the German turn. Um, so now I'm gonna pick up the British Army turn. Command and control now. The, the British Army forces are coming on the map here and they're coming on the map down here. Um, so they don't start on the map. Um, the one I, I am playing as much as I can, as much as I, yeah, as much as I can, I'm playing the scenario as printed and provided in the game, but I'm not playing with the optional units. There are some optional tank, uh, companies or platoons, uh, that you can use. I'm not using those. Those optional forces would come on the map this side. Okay. Um, so command and control phase, we're not on the board yet. I doubt that applies, so we're going on to the operations phase. So now is when we're going to get on the map. Um, I'm not going to do anything, um, I'm not going to do anything fancy here except the one thing is that I will obviously try to use, use the, uh, what, what they call this escarpment, um, try to use the escarpment here to cover my approach as, as much as possible but otherwise I'm just trying to get in and figure out find a weak spot and try to exploit it so we'll see what how far the British Army can get and um, now oh yeah the first big rules question is as the British Army is advancing here across the desert towards the escarpment here if they are observed by the Germans, can the Germans use their artillery? Um, what do they have? Yes, they do have. They do have field artillery. So, can they use their field artillery um, uh, in opportunity fire? And I'll figure that out. The other thing is the German player using his his uh, airstrike or air mission, air support mission can also do a ground attack. Um, uh, again, in the spirit of the death ride system, I cannot see where it says artillery can't do opportunity fire. So I'm going to go ahead with that. Um, again, these are two-hour turns, so there is no justification that uh, that it couldn't, you know, physically be done. Um, okay, so this is what we're looking at. The first, the first couple of um, British Army companies came on the, the desert here, came on the map. Um, um, stacking, by the way, is, is two companies. Uh, two companies and a company is either three platoons, up to three platoons, or all of the units of, a, of an assigned uh, organized company. So I have two companies, Bravo Company and Charlie Company, of uh, the second... The second, uh, what is this? Um, uh, Queen's own CH, what Chasseurs? I, I don't know. Um, not sure about that. All right. Um, 
and here is a German anti-air unit. Um, first of all, normal line of sight distance is 12 hexes. This is 11. 11 hexes between German observer and British Army target. Um, this um, anti-air unit is on level 2 escarpment there. It's a little, um, well, no, that should come... Well, actually, I guess that is a little light, but that's with naked eye, normal light, it's very clear. That's level two escarpment there. I, I'm assuming that that counts as the edge of a rise, quote, quote unquote, edge of a rise. And this, let's see, how do I, yes, this intervening terrain, level one escarpment, which is higher than the desert floor here, is closer to the higher unit than the lower unit. Okay, so observer looking over the lower escarpment and across the desert floor observing uh, the target there. Now this, I'm going to look at one uh, German uh, field artillery battery right there. Um, this is off map. Um, but I'm going to put it here for the calculations. Well, I'll put it here. So it is, what is important here, because uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this, this indirect fire attack, but what's important here is that it is a plus unit. So the 3 forward slash 6 um, plus 8 means that it, it's a, its primary attack value is 6. Oh, oh, actually let's see if they can actually even, see if this is even a valid attack. Okay, so these are all the calculations that went into this. Um, uh, first of all, even if it were just a 6 to 24, uh, no, let me, let me rephrase that. Even if you're off the fire table at the lowest column, um, they're still allowed at the lowest column. So there's that factor. But it, this would, I think that the minus 3 opportunity fire um, penalty would still apply. I wonder about that. Um, but I'm, okay, I'm going to assume that it does. It's the minus three opportunity fire mo modifier that uh, makes this attack not worth it. Um, now I could mass, I could mass artillery, but I think the the idea is to avoid the minus three opportunity fire modifier or penalty, which means firing for the Germans to fire during their turn, which means the next German turn, which means to let the British move up, get closer. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Um, but, oh, the other thing to remember is the plus artillery, so the German plus artillery against a soft target is one of my favorite tables from the series, the firepower table. It's artillery plus um, soft target, primary at long ranges is times two. So it's not six to 24, it's 12 to 24. But anyways, we're gonna go for better fire um, effects. Now, now, that doesn't apply to the airstrike though. I mean, German side needs to use this airstrike um, or lose it. So actually, um, and see the Germans wouldn't know what's happening. So actually I'm going to use the airstrike against the advancing infantry there. See what happens here. So for ground attack, this is what I know. Um, the uh, ground attack mission attacks a hex. Um, this can be done at any time during the operations phase, um, friendly or enemy. Um, the, the German player rolls a die. He rolled a five there. Five. You add the support value there, so two for seven. The uh, You look at the ground attack table. Um, the British Army units are in clear terrain. Five plus two is seven, so it's an S2 result. Subtract one if the target's dug in or fortified, not in this case. So S2, suppression level two. Um, And that applies to all the units in the target hex, so they are S2. Put a red S2 on there. They moved uh, their full allowance. So I'm going to mark them as moved full. Now, 
all of this I know. What I don't know is whether it stays there. Um, for now I'm going to leave the German air unit there in the same hex.